The advantages of continuous tear capsulotomy include reduced likelihood of inadvertent capsular tear, lack of capsular flaps which can occlude phaco emulsification or irrigation and aspiration, better visualization of the capsule for in-the-bag implantation of intraocular lenses, and better support of lens implants, minimizing decentration and capsular opacification. Several methods have been described enabling surgeons to learn the techniques of capsularexis, including disposable cystotomes, bent 27 or 30 gauge needles, and capsular forceps. These techniques are performed either with continuous irrigation or under a veil of viscoelastic. The technique usually requires three maneuvers. First, maintenance of the anterior chamber is required with either irrigation or viscoelastic protection. Second, the anterior capsule needs to be opened with a sharp instrument to start the tear. Third, the capsular flap needs to be grasped to direct the tear for 360 degrees in a circular fashion. Here I describe a new capsular rexus forceps that can perform each of these maneuvers with a single instrument. The unique feature of these forceps is its thin, round, uniform diameter blades designed to minimize wound gape. Its jaws are 8 millimeters from angle to tip, placing the tips at closer proximity to the center axis of rotation. The tips of the forceps are tapered to more closely resemble that of a cystotome, allowing the capsule to be grasped and opened in one maneuver. The round handle enables the instrument to be used with a rotating motion of the thumb and index finger rather than movement of the entire hand and wrist, creating better sensitivity and control for the surgeon. In addition, the instrument is modified allowing it to be attached to a viscoelastic syringe or an irrigating handpiece to allow for administration of fluid or viscoelastic while creating the capsulorexis. The use of the new one-step forceps for capsulorexis is demonstrated. Here's a view using the Miyake technique from inside the eye demonstrating capsulorexis using the forceps. The technique of capsulorexis using the forceps is as follows. The instrument handles are grasped with the thumb and index finger and the blades are brought together. The instrument is passed through the keratotomy incision. The bolus of viscoelastic is injected and the anterior capsule is grasped at two o'clock, approximately two millimeters from the center of the lens. This maneuver penetrates the capsule with the cystotome tip, thus opening it. Without releasing the capsule, the handle is rotated clockwise, directing the tear towards 7 o'clock. The capsule is then re-grasped close to the edge of the tear, and the forceps rotated counterclockwise, continuing the direction of the tear towards its origin. At 12 o'clock, the tear is slightly directed from the outside in to encompass the original opening. Without releasing the forceps, the capsular flap can then be removed from the eye. In several hundred cases, I have found this single instrument to be superior to available cystotomes and other forms of capsular forceps in allowing more delicate control in both initiating as well as directing the capsular tear. The convenience of having one instrument replacing several should enable surgeons to more readily master the techniques, 
of Capsulorexis. Thousands of surgeons from all over the world have found the Kirschner One-Step Capsulorexis Cystotome Forceps, manufactured by Ryan Medical of Tampa, Florida, to be effective in allowing them to open and complete the capsular tear with a single instrument. Here I will demonstrate several cases showing the maneuvers for opening the anterior lens capsule. The instrument is inserted with the blades closed and slightly rotated counterclockwise. As the blades are open, the capsule can be grasped. If the capsule is quite elastic, as you see in this case, it can be difficult to pinch the capsule and start the tear. This maneuver may need to be repeated more than once until an edge of capsular flap is created. Once the edge is created, this can be grasped with the forceps tips and directed in a circular fashion. The key here is to grab the leading edge of the capsular tear to enable better control of the direction of that tear. The first maneuver is a pinch of the anterior lens capsule, thus opening it. The tips do not function like a cystotome in the sense that they do not puncture the capsule, but rather snag it, creating the tear with a smoothed edge, avoiding puncture marks that can lead to uncontrolled equatorial tears. If you end up with a small piece of capsular flap, as in this case, re-grasp the flap at its leading edge to gain better control of the direction of the tear. It is not important that the tear be a perfect circle every time, but that it be round and continuous with an unbroken edge. The use of a viscoelastic makes this procedure much, much simpler. I advise making a keratome style incision of three millimeters followed by inflation of the anterior chamber with viscoelastic. I prefer Helon or the new Helon GV as it is clear and allows you to work within it and doesn't interfere with manipulation of the flap. The anterior capsule is grasped at approximately two to three o'clock, thus pinching snagging and opening the anterior lens capsule, creating an edge which you can direct for the capsular tear. If at first you don't succeed, grab the capsule again and keep pulling the tear in a circular fashion in the direction which you desire. Although smaller central capsulotomies aid in the implantation of intraocular lenses, they do make it somewhat more difficult for intercapsular phaco emulsification and cortical cleanup. Decide what size capsular opening is best for you for your technique. Here I show the capsule immediately after intercapsular phaco emulsification, inflating the capsular bag with Helon GV, showing you what a smoothed edge continuous capsularexis enables you to do. With a little practice, reproducible round central capsulorexes are possible with very little effort using the new one-step capsulorexis cystotome forceps. If the tear should go in a direction other than the one which you desire, regrasp the tear right at its leading edge, right here, and redirect it towards the center. You may regrasp the flap as many times as you wish to affect the desired capsular opening. 